Hello everyone, welcome to the second phase of the course and the first phase which was spanning over uh, first three weeks, we uh, discussed some of the basic concepts which constitute the premise of, of this method, method of ma matrix method of structure analysis. There we uh, discussed the underlying philosophy of the method and the underlying philosophy is if we have a structure then we need to break the structure into small, small pieces and for each piece, uh, for instance if it is truss then divide the entire truss into small, small each member, then for each member similarly for beam and frames for each component uh, we need to write the force displacement relation using the stiffness definition and then once we have the force displacement relation for all the members then we need to assemble them to get the global uh, system of equations and then we apply the boundary conditions and solve them. What we will be doing in the second phase which is starting today, uh, we will see how this is to be done for uh, different structural components. Uh, today this week uh, we will start with truss and then subsequent weeks we also see uh, the similar exercise for beams and frames. So, the what essentially we will be discussing uh, is the of course, how that method is to be uh, are, is to be translated for truss problem and also some of the implementation, uh, some of the difficulties or the some of the uh, implementation issues that we may come across uh, while uh, while applying this method. Okay. Okay, you see, uh, so today is this is the 16th lecture, we will start with uh, uh, application of matrix method analysis for truss and today's topic is element stiffness matrix. We will see how the equation once you have discretized this, once you have divided the entire structure into small, small elements, small, small segments, for each segment how to write the force displacement relation and that is we are going to do it for truss today. Okay. Um, See here it is written element stiffness matrix, you can write it is member stiffness matrix as well. Okay, so, let us take a truss problem. Uh, now, if we, we the first step is we remove the take only this truss, remove the loads, remove the boundary conditions, how to use the load and the boundary conditions we will see in the subsequent uh, lectures. Now, this is the structure we have. Now, the first is the structure we need to break the structure into several elements, in this case the several members. Okay. Now, then for each member, we for each member, for each member we need to write the element, for different members we need to write the force displacement relation means the force is equal to is equal to stiffness into displacement, right. This relation we do it for every member and then assemble it and today what we see is we how to write this expression for a given member. Okay. Now, let us take uh, one example, let, uh, this is an example, this is an again a statically determined structure and we can solve it and this is the solution uh, of this problem. But let us not right now bother about the solution because uh, we have not come to that stage where we get the solution. Let us first write the element stiffness, member stiffness matrix. Now, uh, see the first thing is remove the loads and the uh, and the and the boundary conditions. Remove the load means it is just don't don't bother about loads and boundary condition right now. We'll bring we'll see how the external load and the boundary conditions to be taken into account that we'll see in the subsequent uh, subsequently. Okay, so uh, now you see actually the. If we look at the numbering of the member, this is note, this is point number one, joint number A, joint number B, joint number C, but this is not the way we uh, we identify joints in this method. Instead of writing A, B, C or X, Y, Z, what we do is we write say this is uh, this is first joint number one, joint number two, and joint number uh, joint number three. Okay. Now. Now, uh, once we have identified the joints and if you have a, if you have say uh, four uh, n number of joints in a, in a truss, then it has to be number like this 1 to n. Now, here one point I just am mentioning now, 
we will come to this point once again when we do the numbering numbering is also not very it is not very arbitrary way we should number uh, different joints uh, we will see that uh, uh, we will see that uh, uh, you have to number in a specific way so that the matrix is in the end at the end of the day the matrix that you that you that we arrive that matrix becomes banded matrix and what is banded matrix and all we will see that. So, at this point keep that in mind the numbering of different joints is not arbitrary yes you can number the way you want, but make sure there are certain requirements com computational requirements that needs to be satisfied while you do this numbering. Okay. Now, once we have this, so let us number the members also. So, this is member number 1, member number 2 and member number 3. Now, once we have the member, then let us suppose at this joint, um, at this joint, let us uh, at this joint, uh, two every joints we have two degrees of freedom. Okay, so suppose these two degrees of freedom is, so at a, a, at this point we have one this one horizontal displacement say u here, and one vertical displacement say it is u x and u y, but again we don't write the uh, we don't identify the degrees of freedom by u x u y v x and v y and so on instead of that let us the degrees of freedom it is if you are using u then it is u 1 and it is u 2 so whenever we say that the first degrees of freedom in this case it is the displaced horizontal displacement of this joint second degrees of freedom of this structure is the horizontal vertical displacement uh, at this joint so similarly so we have we have say it is 3, 4 and it is 5, 6. So, total 6 degrees of freedom we have each each joints 2 degrees of freedom. Okay. Now, each degrees of freedom uh, similar to nodes or points and the member each degrees of freedom uh, we need to give an id and this is 1, 2, 3, 4 at the different ids for the different degrees of freedom. Now, once we have that the next is we need to take three members we have here three members separately. So, this is member number 1, member number 2 and mem member number 3. Now, see member number 2 we have 2 at this joint it is degrees of freedom 1 and 2 at this joint degrees of freedom 5 and 6. Again for 2 point common point 2 is the common node between member number 1 and mem member number 2. So, naturally degrees of freedom at node at point uh, at this point would be 1 and the this is will be 2. So, this is how the degrees of freedom uh, for different member. Okay. Now, we have to write the stiffness matrix or the force displacement relation for each separate member. Okay. Now, so, uh, if if we take this length is the length of each is uh, L, this is L, this is L, this is L. So, we can find out what is the coordinates of his joints as well. Okay. These points are important, uh, we will be using this point we can uh, in this case it is a 60 degree, but it could be any arbitrary angle say theta. So, these, these, these coordinates of, of these two points are required to find out this angle theta and the length of this member. Okay. Now, next is uh, suppose take an any arbitrary as I said our objective is now is to find out the stiff find out the force displacement relation for each member. So, let us let us find out a force displacement relation for, a, for any member or we, which is arbitrarily oriented and once we have the force displacement relation for that or the stiffness matrix for that member then depending on the degrees of freedom and depending on the coordinates of the coordinates of the coordinates of the points uh, we can have the similar equations for different members. So, let us take take um, any member arbitrary member say member m and uh, which the uh, this is node i and this is node j and the degrees of freedom at node i is i 1 i 2 and this is j 1 and j 2. Okay. Uh, it is you know depending on i 1 and i 2, j 1 and j 2 and depending on the value of m and depending on the coordinate of this i th member and j th member, we can have different uh, member in different orientation. Now, take us for for writing uh, for the ease in write for writing, let us say this member is 1 and 2 and the degrees of freedom is 1, 2 here and 3, 4 here. Okay. So, we will find out what is the 
the force displacement relation for this member. So, for so in this case we take i is equal to 1, j is equal to 2 and i 1, i 2 is equal to 1 to j 1, j 2 is equal to 3, 4. Okay. So, that we do not have to write i 1, i 2, j 1, j 2 again and again. Okay. Writing will be easier in terms of 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So, now uh, suppose uh, as I said uh, these are the degrees of freedom u 1, u 2, u 3, u 4 are the corresponding degrees of freedom and then um, the forces at members force in two different direction say it is p 1, p 1, p 2, p 3 and p 4, p 1, p 2, p 3 and p 4. Okay. So, when we when whenever we say p 4 it automatically means p 4 is the force in vertical direction at joint 2. Okay. Now, what we need to find out, so this is your displacement e 1 e 2 e 3 e 4 and the associated forces are p 1 p 2 p 3 p 4. So, what we are interested now is to find out a relation between the force and the displacement. So, here we have 4 degrees of freedom and the 4 corresponding 4 forces. So, these are the forces and corresponding associated displacements are these and how these forces and the displacement are related to each other and so they are related to each other to a stiffness matrix uh, k. Now, you remember k is a super, superscript 1, this k 1 means this is the node number, this is suppose this is element number 1 or member number 1. Okay. Any arbitrary any arbitrary element, any arbitrary member we can write this stiffness matrix is say k e, where e is the uh, id of the uh, element. In this case, this is k m. Okay. Whenever we say k m, it means the stiffness matrix, the member stiffness matrix for the mth member. So, k 1 is the stiffness matrix of the first member, member, member number 1. Okay. And another thing is usually as you can use your notation, but usually we use a small k for element stiffness matrix. Element stiffness matrix. Okay. Now, today what we do is we need to we need to see how to determine this k 1 or k for any arbitrary member. Now, if you recall uh, in the second class, second week uh, we discussed this, if we have a truss, truss is a two force member. So, uh, essentially you, if you if you take any member, we have a force along the longitudinal axis of the member. Now, you see there are now let me introduce two coordinate system. One is the local coordinate system and one is the global coordinate system. You see local coordinate system is the coordinate system along for instance if we take f1 and f2, if we assume a coordinate system like this, if we assume a coordinate system which is x is in this direction, this is your x direction and this is your y direction. Say it is y dash and x dash because x and y we have already used for something else. So, the, the local coordinate system, local coordinate system. Okay. So, f 1 and f 2, these two forces are with respect to local coordinate system. Okay. Now, if we have f 1 and f 2, two forces defined in with respect to local coordinate system and the associated displacements are e 1 and u 2 again in the local coordinate system. Then if you, you recall, we discussed in the second week that f 1 and f 2 and e 1 and u 2 are related with this and this is the stiffness matrix, this is the stiffness matrix k and this stiffness matrix is uh, the local stiffness matrix, this is local stiffness matrix. Okay. If we have a different member, for instance, if you have a member like, if you have a member like this, if you have a member like this, okay, and then in this member, if we have a, if we have uh, the coordinate system like this, for instance, this is this is this is x direction, this is x dash direction, and then this is y dash direction. And then corresponding forces are say this is the corresponding forces, this is f, uh, f 2 and this is f 1, f 1 and similarly we have u 2 and u 1, u 1 here, u 1 here. So, u 1, u 2 and f 1, f f 2 again will be related by the same stiffness matrix, there will be no change in the stiffness matrix and this is stiffness matrix is with respect to local, co local coordinate system. But you know 
what at the when we when we at the end of the day we won't be dealing with local uh, stiffness matrices local uh, force displacement relation we have to we have to add assemble all the force displacement relation to get the global system of equation and therefore we need to write uh, the 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 form of the element stiffness matrix the k we instead of this is with respect to local coordinate system but instead of local coordinate system we need to transfer them we need from local coordinate system to global coordinate system. Okay. So, once we have the global coordinate system, this element stiffness matrix for global coordinate system, then irrespective of the orientation of the uh, orientation of the truss member, always okay. Uh, if we, we when we when we say that that force displacement relation with respect to local coordinate system and global co coordinate system, it essentially means when we see the local stiffness matrix, it relates the forces and the displacement defined in local coordinate system. When we say global stiffness matrix, it means or stiffness matrix with respect to the global coordinate, it means that it relates the force and displacement defining global coordinate system. Now, at the end of the day, we need to solve the entire structure, right. So, entire structure all the forces and the displacement is are which are defined with respect to a cord fixed coordinate system. And therefore, it is very important that we transfer this element stiffness matrix which is written in local coordinate system to global coordinate system. So, when you do that means, means now we have to write the, we have to write, you remember last in the, in the previous slide just now we saw your, your e equation was defined with respect to this and this coordinate system and where we have the force, force 1 this, but now this is local and then this is global with respect to global coordinate, where the displacements, the degrees of freedom and the forces are defined with respect to global coordinate system which is x and y here. And that is the reason why at every joints we have two, two displacement, one is global x direction, global y direction, global x direction, global y direction and similarly forces also in global x, global y and global x, global y direction. Okay. Now, um, let us do this. Let us. Mm, so, this is the thing that we need to find out and uh, that we discuss this uh, we have to do now. Okay. So, let us do, let us do that. Uh, you see, um, suppose take any, so what we know is if we have say take first take a member and in this member we have uh, this is the coordinate system where we have the x dash and this is y dash okay and then we have defined here is u this is say u1 u1 dash and this is u2 dash this is your node number say this is node number 1 and this is point now joint number 2 okay now now we have the same thing here we have this is u1 and then this is u2 then u3 and n u4 this is node number 1 this is known number 2 okay. and suppose this angle is theta. Suppose this angle is theta okay. and what we know is, what we know is that f 1, f 1 and f 2, th this is, is equal to a e by l 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and this is u 1 dash u 1 dash and u 2 dash right. Now, you see <coughs> you can we write now u 1 this 
though they are written in terms of different coordinate system u1 u2 and u1 dash they they are they are defined here in terms of different coordinate system but they have a relation right because essentially they both uh, both tell us what is the movement of what is the displacement of joint 1 so we can find out a relation between e1 u2 and e1 dash and that relation is very straightforward we can just apply the uh, we can just take the components of e1 and u2 uh, along along this direction and if we do that we can write e1 dash is equal to e1 cos theta cos theta plus plus u2 sin theta and similarly u2 dash is equal to u3 cos theta plus u4 sin theta and now this we can write as e1 dash u2 dash which is this is equal to cos theta sin theta 0 0 0 0 cos theta sin theta and then this is u 1 u 2 u 3 and u 4. Okay. Now, suppose cos theta is equal to let us take lambda x is equal to cos theta and lambda y is equal to sin theta and then we can write this expression this expression as this is called this is say this is called this is called t t is the t for transformation what it transform it is a transformation it gives it relates the displacement defined in one coordinate system to displacement defined in another coordinate system. So, this is transform that is how the transformation of displacement can take place. Okay. That is why it is called transformation matrix. Now, so T can be written as once we have this then so T we can write. So, T is equal to so T is equal to lambda x lambda y 0 and 0 0 0 lambda x and lambda y. Okay. This is very important. Okay. We will come to this expression once again or rather several times. Okay. So, what we have done so far is we have displacement in one local coordinate system and the displacement defined in or degrees of freedom rather defined in global coordinate system then we have seen how these two displacement can be transformed. Okay. Now, let us do the same exercise for forces as well and if we do that then forces also can be written. So, let us take uh, let us take uh, let us let us take we can go we can we can we can suppose now the forces will be here uh, here it is say f 1 it is f 1 f 1 and this is f 2 and similarly here it is f 3 and f 4 right and here it is say sorry instead of f 1 you write p 1 because that is the that is the uh, that is how we uh, define forces and in local coordinate system it is f 1 that is how we defined and it is f 2. Okay. Now, this gives you a relation between u 1 dash u 2 dash and u 1 u 2 u 3 u 4. Uh, what we do with the similar exercise which relate f 1 and f 2 with p 1 p 2 p 3 p 4. Now, if we do that, if we do that then, uh, then you check that you can write like this p 1 is equal to p 1 is equal to f 1 cos theta and p 2 p 2 is equal to f 1 sin theta. Similarly, p 3 is equal to it is just the taking the component of forces 
f 2 cos theta and p 3 p 4 is equal to f 2 sin theta f 2 sin theta. Now, you recall if I write p 1, p 2, p 3, p 4, p 1, p 2, p 3 and p 4 and that become if we substitute cos theta as lambda x and sin theta as lambda y, then this become lambda x 0, then uh, lambda y 0 and then 0 lambda x 0 lambda y and then f 1 f 1 f 2. Okay. So, so, this directly comes from these two equation. Okay. So, now again this is if you recall t was t t was like this t was lambda x lambda y 0 0 0 0 lambda x and lambda y this was transformation t. So, naturally this becomes t dash. Okay. Now, so p is related to f 1 f 2 f 1 f 1 p 1 p 2 p 3 p 4 related to f 1 f 2 through t dash. Okay. Now, next if recall that f 1 f 2 is related to e 1 dash u 2 dash with this. So, if I substitute in the in the in this expression if I substitute f 1 if if we substitute f 1 f 1 f 2 from this what we have is what we have is. So, this can be written as now. Um, so, this can be written as say this is p is a vector which consists of p 1 p 2 p 3 p 4 is equal to this is say t dash which is transformation of uh, t and then f 1 f 2 f 1 f 2 was a e by l a e by l into e 1 dash and u 2 dash okay, which is directly from this expression. Okay. A 1 a 1 not only that we have another term here which is which I forgot to write let us uh, erase it. It should be yes it should be uh, 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and then u 1 dash and u 2 dash. Okay. Now, once again you remember e 1 and u 2 dash e 1 and u 2 dash is related to e 1 u 2 u 3 u 4 by this t. So, what we can write is we can substitute e 1 u 2 u 1 dash u 2 dash as so this becomes p which is this and then we can take a e by l out and then transformation t dash and then 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 and then this become t into e 1 u 2 u 3 u 4 right. So, essentially this becomes p is equal to your p 1 p 2 p 3 p 4. So, let us write p 1 p 2 p 3 p 1 p 2 p 3 and p 4 this is something k into u 1 u 2 u 3 u 4 and that k this k is this the entire thing is this k entire thing is this k. Okay. So, this is this k. Now, if I substitute t dash uh, t dash and t t from this expression and t dash from this this uh, t and t are their transpose and do this operation matrix operation and then we get an expression like this we get an expression like this we get an expression like this 
Okay. So, for any arbitrary for any arbitrary member mm. any arbitrary member if the, the, the it was 1 and 2 if you recall in our in our the, the expression that we derived it was 1, it was 1, it was 2 and it was 3 and it was 4 okay. and it is it was 1 and it was 2 something like this. So, it is 1, it is 2, it is 3, it is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and this is 1, this is 2 and this is 1, this is 2. Okay. So, if we do this we have the expression for T dash and the um, and if we substitute that then we get K m is equal to or, or element or member stiffness matrix for any arbitrary member m member stiffness matrix is equal to this. Okay. Now, this i and j depending on the depending on the depending on the depending on the your member i j will be and the i j and these degrees of freedom will be different. For instance, if we have if we have for instance for uh, if we go back to for instance for this case for in, if we consider this member your i is two, your i is 1 and j is 2 and degrees of freedom are this is 5 6 1 2 and for this i is 2 j is 3 and degrees of freedom is 1 2 3 4 so similarly so the stiffness matrix what we get k1 this relates degrees of freedom 5 6 1 2 with the forces 5 6 1 2 similarly we get k2 here which is degrees of freedom for member 2 which relate displacement u1 u2 u3 u4 with the forces p1 p2 p3 p4 similarly stiffness matrix k3 that we get here that that relates forces uh, u3 u, p3 p4 p5 p6 with the displacement u3 u4 u5 and u6 and if we just write a general form of that stiffness matrix then that general form will be that general form is this that general form is this where lambda x is the lambda x and lambda y are this this is the angle if we take this angle um, theta okay now this is the stiffness matrix for a given member this is also called member stiffness matrix okay and now you see there are stiffness matrix in this case has to be 4 by 4 matrix because we have 4 degrees of freedom and then there's four forces so this gives you the stiffness matrix 4 by 4 now let us just before before we before we stop let us try to understand what the interpretation of each element in the stiffness matrix for instance you see lambda this is this means this relates i1 to i1 okay means it is the relation between force in this direction and the displacement in this direction and suppose this lambda x this relates i1 and j1 this relates force in i1 direction and displacement in displacement for j1 similarly um, similarly if it is uh, similarly if we take this then it relates also corresponding force and corresponding displacement. Another important observation uh, that you can see from the stiffness matrix the diagonal terms all the diagonal terms are positive and the stiffness matrix is symmetries. What is the interpretation physical interpretation of stiffness matrix symmetric you can recall structure analysis one you study reciprocal theorem it is very similar to that. Okay. And, um, uh, what is the physical interpretation of all these diagonal term being positive and why whether the diagonal terms can be negative or not uh, what happens wh wh what is the properties of the of the stiffness matrix whether the stiffness matrix is singular or not or is there any other property that stiffness matrix uh, stiffness matrix has any element stiffness matrix has those those things we will be discussing uh, towards the end of this course when we have when we discuss various implementation issues okay so i'll stop here today next class what we do is next class once we have the element stiffness matrix or the member stiffness matrix uh, next class we'll see uh, with uh, with one example uh, 
we compute the member stiffness matrix for different members and then how to assemble all the stiffness matrices to get the global stiffness matrix. Okay, stop here today. See you in the next class. Thank you.